Thank you for joining us here at the Potter's House International Ministries. Here at TPHIM, we proudly proclaim that Jesus is Lord, love abounds, and everyone is an evangelist. We want you to know that there are four ways that you can continue to be a blessing to the kingdom. You can give first through text giving at 904-601-1695. Just text the word give and follow the prompts. The second way is online giving at tbhim.org or through the Ministry One Church app. Also, you can mail in your gifts to the Potter's House International Ministries at 5119 Normandy Boulevard, Jacksonville, Florida, 32205. We thank you for your giving. We appreciate all that you do to help us to continue to be a blessing to our community. some glory in this place tonight come on welcome to wednesday night bible study for those that are watching at home welcome as well as we start worship here at the potter's house let's go come on put those hands together yeah come on somebody Say this, say how great, yeah, is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. And oh, see how great, how great is our Come on and clip those hands in here. Come on, somebody bless his name. How many know that he's great? Come on, help me out. Say how great, say how great it's our God. I'll wave my 
we give you the glory and the honor we bless your holy name and we will praise you forevermore we honor you in this place for there is none like you hallelujah to the most high God to the one that can do all to the one that can do the impossible can you just lift your hands in this moment right now and begin to honor him come on somebody begin to lift up their voices somebody lift up their voices and bless his holy name bless his holy name bless his holy Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. For I surrender wrong to you. And everything I give to you. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. I surrender all to you and everything I give to you withhold nothing withhold nothing say I surrender Come on, somebody say everything I everything I give, I give to, you. to you. Say withhold nothing. Withhold nothing. Withhold nothing. Say I surrender all. I surrender. Come on, if you don't mind, just lift your hands and declare that. And say everything I give to you. Oh God. I Withhold nothing. Withhold nothing. Withhold nothing. Lord, we cry withholding. Lord, we cry withholding. Lord, we cry withholding. Lord, we cry withholding. Come on, somebody declare, I give you all. Say, I give you all of me. I give you all of me. I give you all of me. Yeah. I give you all of me. Come on, somebody declare, say, I give you. Somebody declare and say, I give you all. Come on and say, say, King Jesus, my eyes save you forever. I give you all. Say, I give you all of me. One more time, say, King Jesus, my eyes.
say, I surrender. I surrender all to you. Come on, somebody say everything. Everything I give to you. Say, I surrender all. I surrender all to you. Sing everything I give. One more time. I surrender. I surrender all to you. Everything. Everything I give to you. saying because you're with me because you're with me yeah. I will not fear come on let's lift our voices say because you're with me Somebody say, because you're with me. Because you're with me. Sing, because you're with me. You're with me. Say, I will not fear it all. I will not fear. I will not fear. Why? Because you're my hiding place. Say, my hiding place. 
Say my safe my refuge. Say my treasure, Lord. You are say my friend. our friend our king yes, God. the anointed one he is the holy one of Israel he is our great God our triumphant God our battle axe our shield a very present help in the time of trouble he is Jesus, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. He is the anointed one. He is Emmanuel, God with us. Ah, uh, if he's here in this room, if he's here on the internet, you may be in your car, you may be in your living room, you may be in your bedroom, but wherever you are, you ought to raise your voice with a voice of triumph, with a voice of declaration, and declare that He is Lord. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Come on, sing. Hallelujah. I will exalt you. We will exalt you. Lord, you are highly favored and exalted. God will, will exalt you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You are my God. You are my God. Hallelujah. 
Lord, even on tonight, we look to the heavens. Hey, glory to God. We look to the place of your power. We look beyond our problems. We look beyond our situations. We look beyond our circumstances. We look beyond the hills and know that our help cometh from the Lord who created the heavens and the earth. We look at your throne, Lord God, and we come to you boldly, Lord God, asking forgiveness of our sins and the washing in the blood of the Lamb, Lord God, that we might come to you in our time of need and you might meet that need tonight, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, meet the needs, Lord God. There are some that are on the internet who have lost loved ones. Meet the need, Lord God. There are some who are grieving tonight, Lord God. Meet the need, Lord God. There are some that seem confused tonight, Lord God. Meet the need, Lord God. Oh, let them know that God is not the author of confusion, Lord God. In the name of Jesus. We declare that every yoke be broken, Lord God. We declare that the anointing and the power of God would flow through these internet channels, Lord God. In the name of Jesus. Into the cars, Lord God. Into the bedrooms, Lord God. Into the living rooms, Lord God. Into the homes, Lord God. Into the apartments, Lord God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, we plead the blood. We plead the blood. We plead the blood. We plead the blood. We come against doubt. We come against depression. We come against despair. We come against, Lord God, the enabling forces of the enemy. With the blood of Jesus, we rebuke the devil. The Lord Jesus come against the devil in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, we declare power tonight. Resurrection power. Resurrection power. Lord God, power over the enemy power over our minds power over our thoughts power over our spirits power over what we see power over what we've heard power over the past power to walk into the future and power to stand in our presence and right now Lord God we give you the praise we give you the glory we give you the honor in Jesus name in Jesus name if you got tonight give them praise Hallelujah. give them thanks Hallelujah. Hallelujah. worthy 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 he's worthy mm. ah. Come on, bless them, bless them all over the place tonight. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, praise team. Thank you, musicians and dancers and all of the workers. We celebrate you tonight. We celebrate your intense labor of love, your intentional labor of love in the midst of a pandemic. Amen. And we give God honor for his presence tonight. God is truly in this place i thank god tonight for my spiritual father for my bishop and my spiritual mom lady Nalene. they're both in the house tonight come on give god praise for them come on you can do better than that you can do better you may not see them but they're both here amen amen and i love them dearly and thank god for them thank god for this ministry that has housed my family over the last five years amen thank god for all that they've done for me for uh, my family for my church new vision international ministries amen up in bridgeport connecticut there's so many things that they've connected in my life and dots that they've connected and help that they've given a word that they've released power that they prayed over my life and into my life oh god you got i wish i had somebody in here that got that connection you got to have that connection you got to know you got to know that the anointing starts at the head and begins to flow down. Amen. And you are where you are. You're doing what you're doing. Yes, because of the grace of God, but because also of the grace of God that is in the man and the woman of God in your life. Amen. Amen.
just celebrated 22 years of ministry in the bishopric and the office of the bishop, March 6, 1999. How many of you were able to celebrate with the man of God? You sent gifts and you sent uh, emails and letters and cards. Amen. And if you didn't get that opportunity, you ought to take that opportunity to make sure that you sow so that you can glow in the places of God. God wants to do something in your life, but we need to sow up so we can become the people that God have called us to be. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Uh, even for that, uh, uh, I heard Bishop talk about first fruit and I I hope we all got it because the real and the true understanding of first fruit is that the first fruit belongs to the priest. Amen. So really, you're supposed to get the first fruit. You don't give it to the church. You give it to the priest and you put it in the hand of the priest. Amen. And then the priest prays over it and then the blessing comes. Amen. That's the biblical way it was done. I, I, I know y'all didn't hear, hear no Bible tonight. Amen. Anybody come to hear some word tonight? Amen. Well, I'm going to do the very, very best I can in the absence of my father, who is not going to preach tonight, as you can probably see and tell, but he is standing with me in prayer, amen, and in the confidence of the Holy Spirit uh, in this place. So tonight, open your Bibles to the book of Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. The book of Colossians, chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. Amen. I like how it's nice and quiet in here. You must be waiting for something. Amen. I'm waiting too. Let me know when to get here. I want to share and preach tonight from the topic, He Never quits he never quits never quits if then you were raised with Christ if then if you were baptized with Christ and uh, raised with Christ you're baptized in him and raised with him seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Seek those things which are above. Set your mind on those things above and not on things on the earth. Let us pray. Lord God, a significant word for a significant day and a significant time. Use me in an instance, Lord God, where only you can speak. And only you can say what needs to be said. We declare it. We decree it. We believe it. We know as the body of Christ that we shall live and not die. Declare the works of our God. This is our declaration this night. In Jesus' name, amen. It's very difficult in a time like this to focus on things that are above when there's so many things that are right in front of you that act as distractors or act as stressors or act as deterrents or act as deflectors to the things that God wants you to focus on. How many of you know that sometimes in life we want to focus on the things of God, but because we were shaped and born and shaped in iniquity, it becomes easier for us to assimilate to the natural realm than it is to ascend to the spiritual realm. We say that we want to live our best lives, and I believe Joel Osteen may have made that quote, and we say that we want life and life more abundantly, but somehow we know what we want, but we don't know who we want. Or you can get these things, but you got to know where to get them. You have to have a spiritual GPS that is in tune with where this abundant life is. Now, we know it in sense, and we know it in mind, and we know it in spirit, but have we really tapped into what it is that God has 
for us to tap into. Because in order to move from the natural to the supernatural, you've got to be in a specific place with God. Tonight I have the task of sharing that what we want is synonymous with who we want. Paul in this text has the magnanimous task of starting a church at Colossae and keeping that church on the straight and narrow using ancient letters that we call epistles. However, before the church was established, there was already a strong influence of Judaism, Gnosticism, and paganism. Moreover, what people tried to do is mix their old faith or their old persuasions with their newfound faith in Christ, and this creates a dangerous spiritual cocktail that we call syncretism. Now, you know what syncretism is. Bishop has shared this with us many times, but we'll review it one more time tonight. Syncretism is the inappropriate blending of a non-Christian religious ideas or practices with the Christian faith. It is the fusion of diverse religious beliefs and practices into our own. But there's one thing that we need to look at Paul about before we make a transfer to where we are today. And that is that when Paul opens the text, he makes sure that we understand that if you are truly connected to Christ, then you have a window to those things that are not only in the atmosphere in front of you, but are in the stratosphere above you. There's some things that we need to know that we're connected to where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God and we need to set our mind on those things. Think of those things that are good. Think of those things that are pure. Think of those things that are honest. Think of those things that are godly. Think of those things that are holy. Think of those things that are righteous. We have to set our eyes on the things that are above. Now I know we've got some financial stresses. I know we have some children's stresses. We got some marriage stresses. We got some vaccination stresses. We got some pandemic stresses that have come to uh, captivate our heart and capture our mind and capture our attention but we need to understand that we have to rise above these things for this is not the first time that the people of God have had to struggle in the natural realm and yet overcome with the spiritual antidote so watch this unfortunately we struggle with syncretism today now most of us aren't mixing religions most of us are not bringing Buddhists or, 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 or Marxism or, or, or some other kind of faith uh, uh, into the Christian faith. But, but here's what we do do. What we do is we mix the culture of the world into the culture of the kingdom. And the culture of the world is diametrically opposed to the culture of the kingdom. For the culture of the world functions based on what you see at first sight. It's based on your emotional attachment to things. It's based on your mental attachment to things. But the culture of the kingdom is based on your attachment to the king. Uh, uh, we don't get this in a minute. So watch this. We have been in the world such a long time, it's hard to shake the tentacles of the natural realm. In fact, most Christians never get to meet the Hebraic Jesus. They only know the historical Jesus. We know the Jesus who was our Savior, but we have not met the powerful Jesus of creation. The Jesus who has never lost his power because of circumstances surrounding our lives and the world. There is a Jesus, our Jesus, who not only wants to save us, but he wants to be the Lord of our lives. And if he's going to be the Lord of our lives, then we must be connected with him like two oxen, and he's the strong ox, and we're the weak ox, and wherever he goes, we follow. And when we follow God, God is going to give you the power to elevate your vision, the power to elevate your faith, the power to elevate your grace, the power to see sickness. 
sickness and say, well, I may be sick, but God is still a healer. I may have a, a pain in my body, but I know God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly according to the power that work within me. So what do I have to do? I got to get a power working within me. I got to stir up the gift. I got to confess some scriptures. I got to get something in me that makes me operate in the spirit and makes me walk out of the natural realm into the realm where God can minister to me and show me his power and favor. Somebody say power and favor. So one of the ways that God does this is he leaves and he left gifts in the earth. Someone may not have understood why I acknowledge my spiritual father and spiritual mother because they are gifts in the earth. So Ephesians 4, 11 and 15 says this. And he gave some apostles. Some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors, and some teachers. And then there are some that operate in all of those capacities. For what? For the perfecting of the saints. What, what does that mean, perfecting of the saints? That means there's something imperfect in us that needs to be perfected. There's something in us that's not the way God wants us to be. So he puts men and women in our life to speak into our life to help us perfect those things that are imperfect. Why? For the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we come, watch this, in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. There it is, there it is, right there. All we need to know right now, watch this, till we come what? Into the unity of the faith. We've got to come together. And we've got to come together under the bloodstained banner. But not only the unity of the faith in the natural realm, the unity of the faith in the spirit realm. There's something powerful about the prayer that Jesus prayed in John chapter 17 towards the end of the text. He talks about that we may be one as he and the father are one. He wants us to be in unified in unity with the father. Are you catching this? How do we get that? We need the knowledge of the son of God. Unto what? A perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. In other words, we got a little bit of Christ. We got some Christ. Some of us have a little more than others, but we haven't come into the fullness of Christ. I don't know about you, but I'm still striving. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men the cunning and craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive. But speaking the truth and love may grow up unto him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. We can be children in the faith. Children in the faith, not seeing the bigger picture. Not seeing that God can use a pandemic to reshape us. Not seeing that God can use a pandemic to retool us. Not seeing that God can use a pandemic to refocus us. Not seeing that God can use a pandemic to repurpose us. Not seeing that God can use a pandemic to slow us down. Not seeing that God can use a pandemic to help us strengthen our marriages. Not seeing that God can use a pandemic to help us spend more time with our children. Not seeing that God can use a pandemic to help us spend more time with him. Not seeing that God can use a pandemic to help us worship. Not seeing that God can use a pandemic to draw us closer to him. Oh, I wish I had three people in here that can see if I look into the spirit realm, I can see that God has a plan that's not for my destruction. I love it. I love what God said in, the, in, in Jeremiah when he talks about the Babylonians. He said, the Babylonians will be my battle axe to crush the nations. And then I love it when he says, and when I'm finished with the Babylonians, I'm going to crush them. 
God will use something negative to bring about a positive thing and then use the negative thing and crush it to let the folk know that I'm still God. Uh, so watch this thing. But speaking the truth in love that we may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. We want to grow up in Christ. We want to grow up into the head. We want to learn how to speak the truth in love. Uh, so watch this. If you're going to speak the truth in love, you cannot be moved by everything you see. Okay, so watch. Racism in America. How many see it? Can't be moved by it. You can't let it make you a bigot, uh, a bigot. You can't let it make you a racist. You can't allow your blackness to overrule your Christness. Come on, we, 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 can't, we can't get to a place where I'm so pro-black that I'm anti-God. Oh yeah, yeah. And I, I know people don't want to hear that and I love my blackness. I love the motherland. Travel to the motherland with Bishop. Yes, sir. But I understand its place and proximity in my life. I understand it does not super rule, nor does it supersede the kingdom mandate in my life. I understand how to use what I know about our culture in balance to substantiate who I am in the earth, but not to substantiate who I am in heaven, because who I am in heaven is greater than who I am in the earth. So watch this. Classism, sexism. We see it all the time. Watch this. The political paradox. While many were hoping for the restoration of morality, four years ago through the red elephant. But there was an underlying racist faction and an agenda of greed that nobody saw coming. Hmm. Then we got on the blue donkey of the people and there seems to now be inclusion. And there's economic relief on the way, but at what cost? Because a hyper liberal agenda underlies them stimulus checks. Oh, you, you got to watch this. And they'll continue to water down the embers of the morality of the United States. So we can't be blue, we can't be red, but we've got to be covered in the blood. So watch this. Financial uncertainty. I'm just sharing what people see. Because if I see this stuff and I can't see God, these things that I see will captivate my imagination, captivate my attention, and anything that's captivated can be captured. Financial uncertainty, where millions are unemployed, corporations who could not pivot or shift, small businesses and family-owned businesses with decades of history that can no longer survive because of the lack of foot traffic have closed. How many of you see it? In every city in America, in every place of commerce, from strip malls to malls to standalone businesses, we see windows with empty interior spaces covered with the dust of non-productivity. And then there's something now that psychologists and, and other mental health officials have come up with called the pandemic wall. What is that? It's usually referred to and, and used with children, but now it, it's crossing over to be used with adults. But it's this uh, uh, epic that children no longer uh, want to attend school via computer or remote learning. I give an example. I have a nephew who is a honor roll student and was an honor roll student all up until about three months ago. And somewhere in those three months, he began to be recalcitrant or he began to be, uh, uh, how do you say it, perplexed and didn't want to deal with going to school through a computer. 
Many children in America are experiencing that today. The, the gap is widening between those who know and those who don't know. And we're looking at this thing and we're saying, God, where are you? And God is saying, I'm right here. But you don't have to look at the gap. You can be a part of closing the gap. If you walk in the power that I gave you when you first met me. They miss interacting with their classmates and interfacing with teachers. Adults are being struck by this mental and emotional stressors that come from social deprivation, not being able to connect with folk. According to the New York Times article, adults are constantly bathed in conditions of fear, disease, and social constraint. People want to hug again. They want a fellowship and engage in other social environments that made up their cultural norms. That's why being here today and being in the sanctuary and having an opportunity to be connected, even if it is from a social distance point of view, you can still see somebody. You can still see a smile. You can still get a fist pow. You can still get an air hug. It's important to the sustainability of the church and the world around us. Depression and other forms of mental illness, including suicide and escapism, are on the rise. I don't have to explain what suicide is, but escapism, uh, you, you know what that is. You, I, I, I tell you, I tell you, I tell you, I tell you, I, tell you, I, I feel like Country Wayne, but I, I, I tell you this. Watch this. You don't have to go down the street and see no ABCDs boarded up with dust in the windows. Have you seen one? Take me to it. Let me see it. All ABCDs is doing good. Or ABCs, I'm not sure which one it is. I know it's one of them. <laughs> I'm close enough. Hey, man, you know what I'm talking about. You go to the neighborhood drug house, the boy's still on the corner. Because escapism is, is, is a way that people entertain themselves to escape the reality. And they may use alcohol, they may use drugs, they may use gambling, they, 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 they may use uh, pornography, they may use sex, they may use shopping. But they, they figure out a way to not face reality. Escapism. And escapism is on the rise because people don't want to face the reality of the pandemic. The reality is things may never go back to the way they used to be. And if they don't go back to the way they used to be, then we need to accept a new normal, but figure out how the kingdom still advances in the midst of a new normal. We have to figure out how to buy Anathoth when we're going into captivity. You remember, you remember Jeremiah, he was getting ready to be taken captive by the Babylonians. But before he went, God said, go buy Anathoth. Now, that doesn't make sense. Go buy a piece of property. Why am I going to buy a piece of property when I'm going to be enslaved in a little while? Because you won't be enslaved forever. So you don't go into the situation like you're going to be in the pandemic forever. You go into the situation like you're passing through the pandemic and coming out on the other side. I I wish I had three people that would give God some praise in here. I'm coming out on the other side. This ain't the end. This ain't the end. So watch this. How do we elevate our mind? The mind is a funny little thing. But I'm going to tell you. What I've learned about the mind is very simple. It's like a computer, and it needs to be programmed. Amen. And the more of God you put in your mind, the easier it becomes to look above the mountains and the hills and look into the heavens and see where your help comes from. So I want to transition right now because we all have to have been given this power and it's inside of us, but you got to make it do something for you. Right. You got to make it work. I can get a car 
and sit in it. And if I don't push the button and put my foot on the gas and put it in drive, I make it rev it up. You hear it? You know it got power, but you ain't going nowhere. You don't go anywhere until you fully learn how to use all of the systems that make the car show you exactly how much power it has. And every car has a different amount of power. Every human has a different capacity in the faith. So you should never try to be someone else just be who you are because your capacity is not the same as his capacity and your promise is not the same as her promise. So we don't get jealous. We don't get envious. We just work on our craft and become the best we can be in the midst of this situation. So you got a four cylinder capacity. You got eight cylinder capacity. You got 12 cylinder capacity. There are different cylinders that we all run on, but we're all working together. It's all working together. I need the four cylinder person. I need the eight cylinder person. I need the one who's on the bicycle because it's all working together for the good. So watch this. 2 Corinthians 4, 7 through 18. For, but we have this treasure in jars of clay to show this, to show that this all surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair. How many of you have gotten down to your almost last? It was the last that you saw but it was not the last that was going to be provided you see what you saw came down from heaven huh. and what you're going to see came down from heaven see God's going to take care of his children and all good and perfect gifts come down from the father of the heavenly lights in whom there's no variableness or shadow of turning. God is going to meet your needs. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. So you don't have to incapacitate yourself based on need because if you have need of it, God's going to see to you getting it right on time so we are hard pressed but not crushed perplexed but not in despair persecuted but not abandoned struck down but not destroyed we always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our bodies God cuts us back to increase he cuts us back to increase he cuts us back to increase for we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake so that his life may be revealed in our mortal bodies. When we get cut back and still got to praise, people see Jesus. When we get cut back and we're still praying, people see Jesus. When we get cut back and we're still giving, people see Jesus. When we get cut back and we're still loving, people see Jesus. And that what we're here for? People don't want to see you. People want to see Jesus. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Don't nobody want to see me. They want to see the Jesus in me. But the Jesus in me only comes out when he cuts my flesh back. And I should be out all the time, but unfortunately we, we have a way of cramping his style. <sighs> So then death is at work in us. Death is having a work in us. But life is at work in you. It is written, and I believe, therefore I have spoken. With the same spirit of faith, we also believe, and therefore we speak. 
So watch this. Paul was giving them an example that, hey, we're going through some stuff. We're going through some stuff and you see death at work in us, but it gives you life to see us overcome what we are going through. And you overcome what you're going through. And how do we overcome? We speak that thing. How do we speak it? I believe, therefore I have spoken. If you believe it, speak it. Now I'm not talking about name it, claim it. I ain't talking none of that. I'm talking about knowing the will of the Father and knowing the Father in such a way that when you say things, it is in conjunction with his will and therefore he honors his will and it comes to pass and you believe it by faith. All right. All right, folk don't like speaking that. All right, okay. I gave you this one though. I gave you this one for free. The power of death and life is in the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Okay? You have to create your own atmosphere. There's something that I teach called media hurting, and I've been teaching this for years. Media hurting is when you get a specific topic in mass media and you push it through the internet, through print media, through radio, through television, and through every means of getting into the homes of people. And what it does, if you push it hard enough, remember what I talked to you, told you earlier, it captivates you. It captures your imagination. It captures your attention. If it captures your attention, then you can be captured. We have to be careful because those weights and those sins will so easily ensnare us. Oh, it is a sin. Yes, it is to be focused on the world and not focus on the Father. Because now the world has become your idol and the world has become your idol. You believe everything that they say in the world as opposed to everything that's said in the word. You have to choose between the world and the word. <laughs> Whose report are you going to believe? As for me and my house, we're going to Serve the Lord. How many of you see this choosing? The war going on in your members, in our members, between the flesh and the spirit. The flesh chooses the world. The spirit chooses the word. We, we see this. So we're wrestling every day. But you're not wrestling against flesh and blood. We're wrestling against principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness. So I do not want you to denounce the power of your tongue. I do not want you to denounce the atmosphere that you are in unless you pronounce a blessing over it. Let me read out and transition, and we're going to go home. I thought I could go further. I'm not going to worry about it. Bishop and I had a talk. I'm going to say it. Done. Ha. All right, here we go. Because that we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you in his presence. All this is for your benefit. So that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Don't give up. Because Jesus never quits. He ain't never quit on us. Huh? They tried to kill him when he was a child. He wouldn't quit. Huh? They tried to push him off a cliff and he wouldn't quit. Hmm? They said all men of evil about him. They talked about him. You know, some of us don't like to be talked about. We real thin-skinned, but Jesus had a real thick skin. 
Yeah, you, you can say whatever you want to say about him. He, he, he wasn't studying you. That's how they say it down south. He wasn't studying you. And my grandma used to say it like that. He wasn't paying you no attention at all. Why? Because he kept his focus on the things that were above. Huh. He kept his focus on what's on the other side of the cross. Our daily lives and the pain and the pressure and the vicissitudes that we encounter every day, that's your cross. But you got to look beyond the cross because there's joy on the other side. So, so, so watch this. Don't lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. Day as I read, as I study to show myself approved, the workmen that need of not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I'm growing, I'm growing, I'm growing, I'm growing, I'm growing. My outward man is perishing, but my inward man is being renewed. I'm getting stronger on the inside. You may not see anything on the outside, but I'm getting stronger on the inside because I'm spending my time cultivating the inside of myself rather than the outside of myself. Because the outer man is perishing. So watch this. Now my vision and perspective changes. For our light and momentary struggles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. What I'm going through is achieving for us an eternal weight of glory. In other words, when I go through it with a smile on my face, with joy in my heart, and confidence in the finished work of Jesus Christ, God gets the glory. So we fix our eyes. Not on what is seen, but what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. That, that was such a good place to give God some praise. Wait, wait a minute. Stop, stop, stop. Jesus showed up to your house tomorrow morning. And he said, what you going through? And you pull out your little list. Hold on now, Jesus. Let me tell you. <laughs> and you finish it two hours later. And Jesus say to you this, everything you're going through, my son, is temporary. You, you, you see it? You see it? It's just for a minute. But what's unseen is eternal. And what's eternal super rules and supersedes the authority of the prince of the world or the prince of the air. The prince of the air has authority, but he's not the authority. The, 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 the prince of the air tries to blind the people of this world so that they can't see the glory of our God. So God counteracts that by putting his glory in us so that people can see us and still see the glory of God. All right. Right here. In the beginning was the word. I heard that before, Reverend. <laughs> you ain't saying nothing. You're right. I've heard it before too. But I don't want you to hear it. I want you to understand it. <sighs> let me start with this and let me backtrack. When you look at this text and you look at this issue that concerns us concerning the word, you need to understand this, that although the New Testament was written in the Greek, all of its underpinnings are Hebraic in nature. 
Greek translation, Hebrew culture. The Greeks translate one to one, but there's a Hebraic culture that underlies the text. And when you understand the Hebraic culture, it illuminates the text so that you see it from a different perspective. I said, and I opened up and I talked about the fact that we know the historical Jesus, but we don't know the Hebraic Jesus. And for years, I ain't even know. I ain't gonna sit up here and fake it and try to pretend like I had this. Because if I had that, I would have been teaching it. <laughs> if you know better, you do better. When I read this text for years, in the beginning was the word, and I know the word means logos. Got that. Okay, that's the Greek. But for some reason in my head, when I thought about the beginning, I always see Jesus in his incarnate form. I'd always see Jesus in his hypostatic union form. Okay? I see him as God wrapped in the flesh. But to see Jesus in this text as God wrapped in the flesh is error because at this point he had not wrapped himself in flesh. So I was messed up from the start. Always looking for the Trinity. And yes, the Trinity was there. And yes, Jesus was there. But he was there as the Logos. What does that mean? The word, the Logos is a thought. It is a concept. It is a word that comes out of the mouth of God. So what God spoke was Jesus. It's hard to... It, 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 it be blowing my mind. I asked the Lord when I came, I said, Lord, help me to explain this. I understand it, but it's hard to explain. So watch this. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So the Word was God, and the Word was with God, but when he spoke, he spoke the Word. He spoke Jesus before Jesus was wrapped up in the flesh. Now, yeah, Reverend, now you done messed up. You done got out there. No, no. The same was in the beginning with the word, with God. All things were made by him. I've analyzed this for years. All things were made by Jesus. And without him was not anything made that was made. So when God spoke, Jesus did it. So I had to go a little further. What does the word logos mean? In the Hebrew, it means devar. D-E-V-A-R. What does devar mean? It means matter. It means things. It means word. What does God, Jesus, focus on in the earth? He's always reshaping matter. It's easy to reshape matter when you are matter, even though we don't understand it. It's easy to walk on water when you can reconstruct water. Why are you walking on it? Because you created the water and put the principles in the water so you can manipulate the water and walk on the water. You can turn the water into wine. You can turn a dead womb into an alive womb. You can turn a blind man into a seeing man. You can turn a not hearing man. Oh, I wish I It's who he is. He's the life-giving power of God. You got that power on the inside of you. The life giving power of God lives on the inside of us. Think I'm lying? In him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness. The Greek darkness, obscurity. And 
the darkness, obscurity, comprehend, seized. The word comprehend means seize, seized it not. Darkness wants no part of light. But we're full of light, full of grace, full of truth, because of the God that lives inside of us. God helped me, help me to deal with that. And I said to myself, I said, uh, okay, I get it now. When I was eighth grade, I got hit by a car in my knees, right? And here's the part that is crazy. The car was supposed to be traveling from behind me because that's the side of the road that I was standing on. So when they said, these call me the Big D. Big D, here come a car. what I do? I turned around and faced the traffic. But when I turn back around, here comes the car. Hits me in my knees, 10 feet in the air, spitting, whirling, spinning, whirling. I should be dead. But God allowed me to fall on the hood of the car and then softly into a patch of snow. And I literally got up and ran because I was so scared. <laughs> His grace. I've been in situations, running my mouth, I ain't gonna blame nobody, running my mouth, and got myself caught up, and a gang came after me for real. Not the little high school gang, a real gang, the one that be in the newspaper. The thing is, when I was running my mouth, I didn't know that the dude I was talking to was in that gang. Because had I known, I wouldn't have said nothing. Promise you, I didn't say nothing. I say, hey man, go ahead. You want to talk to her? Help yourself. And I was coming home, and they said the twenties are down there waiting for you. And I said, the 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 the, 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 the magnificent twenties. He said, yeah, them twenties. <laughs> I got down there, and I faced off with this dude. He said he had a bedpost in his hand. You know those bedposts that are square and then round and then square and then round and then square and round? Who knows I was shook. <laughs> I was shook. He was at least four inches taller than me. And he seemed bigger with all of them boys with him. And I read back like Biff and Back to the Future. I put my hand back. I said, I'm going to get him. He looked over my shoulder and said, are you about to punch me? <laughs> I was like, no, man. I just, 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 just. <laughs> A bus comes. The bus comes. It didn't pick up the kids at the other bus stop. So back in the day, at 3 o'clock, everybody had to be home. So what do you think all the kids did? They ran from one bus stop to the other bus stop, and where did they run between? Me and him. I looked at it, and I said, this is recently, I'm reflecting over my life, the grace of God. And I'm going to speed it up now. T-boned in a car, in my car at 16 years of age. Other car ran to like T-bone. I should have been dead, but the grace of God. Smoked more reefer than I needed to be smoking. I should have been dead, but the grace of God. Drink liquor, but I should have been drinking, but the grace of God. Got moved, got pulled over by cops and should have got arrested, but the grace of God. It's all been what? The grace of God. The grace of God. The grace of God. Because God never quits. He never quits. He never quits. He never stops taking care of his children. God has a plan for your life and he didn't quit.
quit then. He did quit on the cross and he's not going to quit in the middle of a pandemic. Give God some praise and give him a shout off of in here. The grace of God. We got a treasure inside of us. And God is protecting that treasure himself. But just as he values the treasure that is inside of us, he values the container that holds the treasure. Don't you ever think that because you're going through something, because you had a divorce, because you lost a child in childbirth, because your children may not be what you raised them to be, or because you may not be in the place of ministry that you think you ought to be, or because you never achieved the goals that you set for yourself. And sometimes that's just it. There were goals that we set for ourselves. And not the goals that God set for you. Everybody in this room has value. Everybody in this room has purpose. Everybody in this room has a reason for being here tonight. And everyone listening has a reason for listening tonight. God is speaking to you. God is trying to tell you that his grace is sufficient in your time of need. But you've got to go back and count all the times that you borrowed that grace. That you utilized that grace. And in your weakness, Christ was made strong even before you knew him. Ah, He didn't just start looking after you. When he was creating the earth with his father, he was looking after us. For nothing that he made was for himself. Everything he made was for us. His father and him already had a connection. And I'm not leaving out the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is most invaluable to us. He seals us until the day of redemption. But I'm focusing on the role of Jesus before he was incarnate. He was creating things for us at the beck and call of his father. Why? Because he loves us. He was demonstrating his love for us before he demonstrated his love for us on the cross. And when his father got the, the, the tunic skin and brought it and covered Adam and Eve, he was foreshadowing that my son has got you covered. He's the lamb that was slain from the very foundation of the world. And he loves you. When he prayed in John 17, he said, I not only pray for those who are with me that you put in my hand but I, I'm praying for those who are going to believe that they too may come into the oneness that you and me me and the Father have that oneness, that power, that source that allows us to look beyond the hills and to look above the things we see to the atmosphere and to the things we can't see and then to legitimately speak over our destitute atmospheres and allow water to permeate the dry places, allow the crooked roads to be made straight. You ain't got to say you're going to do it, but you can declare that God is able to do it. God, I know that you are a healer. We have to command the blessing. Got to speak it because we believe it by faith. And we believe that Jesus is not only the historical Jesus, but Jesus has power beyond that transcends the historical Jesus. And when he intercedes for us and he prays for us daily, power is being shot down into the atmosphere from heaven. But we've got to tap into that power. Every morning when we read, study, and pray, tap into the power. And I don't care what the internet says. I don't care what the news media says. You have a different testimony, a different faith, a different belief, a different power. And you speak it over your family. You speak it over this church. You speak it into your ministry. You speak it in the marketplace. Let them not only see the light, but let them hear it. Because it's so bright, you can't contain it. And God, we thank you. Everybody, looking up, 
Look above. God, we thank you for what we now see. Maybe we didn't go deep enough for some, Lord God, but deep enough for others. And those who need to understand will understand this Hebraic Jesus, this pre incarnate Jesus, who was the Word that never returns into you void, who is the Word that never returns into you void, who is the Word that we read who is the very will of God. God, help us to breathe the power of Jesus within us so that we can endure hardness as a good soldier of Christ, so that we can love you with an unfeigned love, Lord God, so that we will not, Lord God, be interfered with by the tricks and the trials of the devil, the craftiness and the deceitfulness of men, Lord God. But we will look to you, Lord God, the author and finisher of our faith. And we will know that you are our deliverer. In the time of trouble, you shall hide us under your wings. God, so right now, in an incredulous tone, we thank you for the pandemic because we're going to find the good in the pandemic and we're going to bring you some glory in the pandemic and we're going to walk out of the pandemic in the glory of God and men shall give you the glory, give you the praise, and give you the honor in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. To those of you who are watching, I pray that you just meet Jesus. For although I talked about his attributes, he's just one Jesus. One person filled with the power of God. But when he comes into your life, he'll save you. He'll change you. He'll transform you. And he'll make you hold in the places that you are broken. Trust Jesus. Trust his finished work at the cross. Trust him to be your Lord and Savior. Trust him to send the Holy Spirit to seal you until the day of redemption. Trust him and don't doubt. And give God the glory and give God the praise. Every day of your natural born life, every minute that you breathe, every morsel that you take, everything that you think, give God praise. Give him praise for your mind, your heart, your soul, the atmosphere in which you live. Give God praise for everything. Give him thanks in all things. And God, we give you the glory and we give you the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Before you, oh, and I, I'm lost without you. At this time, if you want to sow, those of you who are online, there are many ways to sow. You can text and so I believe that should be coming up on the screens at some point. You can text and give. Uh, you can go to the internet and give. Uh, there are various ways that you can sow into the kingdom of God. You can mail a check in. All of those ways that we've been using during the course of the history of our church are available to you. Amen. Use those things. If you want to call in for salvation, you can call and we will have people prepared to talk with you and to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And until next week, we give you glory for the God that lives inside of you. Amen. We pray you were blessed by the worship experience here at the Potter's House. Make sure you share this word with a loved one on your timeline and newsfeed. And remember, there are five ways that you can give. First, you can give by text by simply texting the word GIVE to 904-601-1695. Follow the prompts and you will receive a confirmation text of your gift. 
You may also give online at tphim.org backslash give. You can give through our Ministry One or Ezekiel Church app by downloading the app and following the instructions to give. Or you can mail in your gifts addressed to TPHIM at 5119 Normandy Boulevard, Jacksonville, Florida, 32205. Once again, we thank you for your continued generosity to the Potter's House. And for those of you who have answered the call to salvation, please call or text us at 855-TPH-4JAX. That's 855-874-4529. And until the next time, remember to share this message and stay connected via Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel at TPHJAX. May God bless you and keep you until our next digital gathering.